Angeles. Been doing comedy for five years. Big round of applause for Kyle Farrell, everybody! Give it up for Two Piece! I love Two Piece, actually. It's great. Get over your host. He's doing a great job. All right, just stop applauding for everything. We'll figure out this. There we go. Land in the spaceship. Everything's fine now. How are you guys doing tonight? That's all you got left. You did it. It's already kind of a long night. You've been through a bunch of emotions from laughter to hate and then right back to hate. Um, that's your deal. That's your hill to climb. But uh, I, I really want to see a movie on Christmas, and there's like nothing out. I mean, it kind of it kind of sucked. Like I went out, like I was looking through Fandango, and it's just oh, biggest movie out right now. I, I can go see Black Annie, and I'm calling it Black Annie because that's all it is. That's all the things they changed up about that movie. And I didn't want to not see it because it's Black Annie. I don't want to see White Annie either. <laughs> that also sounds boring. It's not that they changed their race that I'm like uninterested by. They didn't change your race enough. Because I want to see Vietnamese Annie. <laughs> like, you've sold a ticket to Vietnamese Annie. I want to see that scene when like she's at the sweatshop building cell phones and he's like, get over here. You have a lovely singing voice. You don't have to do this anymore. Come with me. And she's like, oh, Daddy Warbucks. And they have like a cool like dance number where like all the little nine year olds come out in those like those clean room suits. Like it looks like a bunch of Oompa Loompas quit the, the chocolate factory and they work for Pentium now. <laughs> like they're inside Intel. You know, and they do like that cool martial arts dance fighting shit. It's the one I wanna see. Exactly, you guys reacted more to that than Black Annie. That's a much better movie. And you get that cool scene when Annie realizes she's made it. Like she's she doesn't have to live like that anymore. It's like Daddy Warbucks, like, come here, Annie. No, Annie, come here, come here. Today the rickshaw pulls you. <laughs> Just like thank you, Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> so anyway, I saw the gambler. It was alright. It's pretty good. All right, you guys are not on movies. That's fine. <laughs> Evening's gonna move along just swell. Uh, I hate, like, I like going out to bars, like hanging out at bars, because you get to meet a lot of interesting people, but then you also have to run into that bullshit that you hate running into at a bar, which is, uh, for me, the biggest, like, is, uh, is that father-son duo that decided, oh, tonight's our night to bond, and they head out to a bar, and that's fine if you wanna hang out with your dad, but, like, don't be that, father-son like coupling that's just like super comfortable with each other talking about pussy because yeah no it's weird for the rest of us exactly that's the whole point there's like what you're doing there's a fine line between that and incest like there might be one other person and it's gay and that's fine if that's a craigslist thing that you guys are doing but you're pretending to be father and son for the moment and I have to like digest that. That's not cool, it's not a good feeling. You're just watching them and they're like, hey boy, I got us a couple shots of Crown Royal. <sighs> All right, Dad, fucking love Crown Royal. Check it out, Carl's Jr. commercial. I need the peanuts out of her shit. <laughs> fucking ain't right, Dad. I like her when the poop comes out. I fucking love you, boy. I fucking love you, Dad. Like he has a moment. <laughs> fucking love you, Dad. And they go to high five, but it's not like a quick get in and get out. It's that aggressive, that finger lock, that, oh, we're doing this. And people are seeing, I fucking love you, Dad. It's the tears in the eyes. And like I said, it's, it's that moment where you're like, I hope they're father and son. <laughs> and I'm not seeing Craigslist shit in real life. <laughs> With the fear I have when I leave the house. I don't. Craigslist has been around 20 years. Somebody's answering those ads. Like, it's, it's gotta happen at least once or twice a day. Just, just statistically, it has to be there. But, you know, I don't wanna be walking on the street. I like candy. You know, candy's delicious. I don't wanna be walking on the street and be like, oh, look, in the distance, a delicious Jolly Rancher. Uh, and then I get closer, 
Because I'm a walker. I walk kind of fast. I get closer. I go, oh, that's just two people in Easter Bunny costumes blowing each other. And their e ears look like a rapper. And I'm not, not super comfortable with that. I like to perform in dark bars, because then you don't get just judgmental stares if you tell a weird <laughs> thing about people just loving each other. That's really what it's about. Like, I'm uncomfortable with people comfortable with each other and themselves. If you want to put on an Easter Bunny costume and blow another guy, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> See? A dark bar is more comfortable when somebody points at you. <laughs> Fucking around. Uh, I dated a, uh, a Filipino girl for a couple of years, and like before you get to go out on that nice, like I didn't know anything about their culture, but before you get to go out on that nice date, uh, you have to stick fight her dad, <laughs> turns out. And he'll beat the shit out of you. He'll beat the shit out of me. Because he has 55 years more stick fighting experience than I would ever will have. But like, she was, she was beautiful though. She was sexy, exotic, she was so tan, you know, just tan, head to toe. Uh, and so every time we took a photo together, it just looked like I was haunting her. <laughs> a lot of like Facebook pictures of like her standing next to a bunch of orbs. <laughs> I managed it. It was a creepy Casper the just a friend ghost kind of look. But like even that kind of fizzled out because, you know, everything gets stale. You date someone for a few years and unless, you know, there's somebody dies in their family. There's no reason to stay together. Is that too dark? <laughs> Just throw it out there. You guys seem kind of dead for a second. Um, but no, no. Like, things get stale. Things uh, peter out. And uh, for us, it, it was just started in the bedroom. So we tried to spice it up by, you know, let's try role playing. Let's see if that works. But we were both such spontaneous people that just kind of had to happen. And so uh, we decided. Uh, let's do role playing. And then one morning, she walks in the bedroom wearing a towel on her head. So I tackled her, and we played Homeland Security. I gave her the full Osama bin Laden treatment, shot in the face and chest. I drew her back for the burial at sea. And then uh, all she said, I released doves because I'm a gentleman. And that's how you handle that situation. And then I wanted to celebrate my own like little special way. So I want to watch like a movie, like Zero Dark Thirty or something. But that's like a three hour movie. And we did not have three hours of sex. Like we, like I want to watch something more time appropriate. So I got on YouTube and I watched the trailer. <laughs> At least half of us were satisfied. So the uh, thing that really breaks down a relationship is you both get into your own routines. Like you just, you get into a routine either that works perfect for both of you or you're like, I'm fucking bored. So what happened is she went off and did her routine, and then I got stuck in my own, which uh, I like to call uh, being miserable. And I got really good at it. It involves a lot of like sitting in the dark, drinking tequila by yourself, and uh, building, you know, kick ass Legos for your coffee table. And uh, I watched a lot of documentaries about pro wrestling on Netflix. That was a gym. Did you know that before he was a wrestler, Samoa Joe was just called Joe? It's, it's a true story. But, but I broke out of that rut and then I had to, it was weird because I missed the years I was dating. I got used to a, a relationship. I got used to a, that and then dating had completely moved on. It became this new thing with apps and Tinder and all this shit that I didn't understand. So I had to get used to like things that people who are single just, that just happens all the time. Yeah, it's like, you know, like getting, you know, you're parked by a Taco Bell at four in the morning and she's crying in the passenger seat. She's like, why won't you fuck me? And you're like, you smell like empanadas. I'll eat you. <laughs> so that was a rough time in my life. Holy shit, that was nine minutes? Sorry. We do get a light at some point during this. I know you didn't get that when two feet was up here. But we do get told when to get off stage. Yeah, no, if you are out on a date tonight, uh, you know what? Two piece stole some of my time. I'm taking it back. Uh, 
I'll be back to that one. I did actually just start dating somebody, and it's awesome. Uh, it's, a, it's sweet to be in a new relationship, but it's, uh, for me personally, it's a lot like being on a moving train uh, and being the only one that knows that up ahead, the bridge is out. So, and you're not gonna tell anybody. Cause regular sex. It's a, it's a good reason not to tell everyone they're gonna die in a fire. Uh, to me, personally. But, no, uh, we went out, we went out drinking uh, as, as we do. That's kind of how we met. It's kind of the downfall of the relationship as well. But like, we went out drinking. We did it kind of hard that night. And uh, so, she got loaded and then I just kind of pretended like I wasn't drunk driving home. <laughs> it's like when you become the Hulk and then you're turning back into Bruce Banner and you're like, oh, swerving. It's that, it's that feeling. Uh, so I took her home, and then we uh, we did the deed, and it was fun, and I texted her the next day, I'm like, hey, how about last night? And she texted back, I don't remember last night. <laughs> Did I just date her my girlfriend? Is that a thing I do? And it was bothering me. Yeah, it's not a good thing, it was bothering me. So the next time I actually saw her, I was like, honey, like, do you really not remember anything about last night? And she... Look at me with those eyes. <laughs> and I don't like to use the word retarded. I just like to tell people that my girlfriend has a couple extra chromosomes kicking around here and there. And don't, no, don't, some of you, don't you fucking judge her. Don't you judge her, I hear it. She's got the most beautiful almond-shaped eyes. They're a little close together for some people. But I think she looks like an angel. She gave me a hand job at the movies once. She didn't, I didn't have to cut a hole in the bottom of the popcorn or nothing. She just buried her monkey fist down there through the bottom of the tub. She's really strong. Ripped my penis off. Threw it across the dark theater. It hit a guy in the head who was trying to watch the Maze Runner. And he just, uh, are they, did they get out of the maze? Like he didn't remember the movie. They gave him amnesia, like an episode of The Honeymooners. Don't feel bad, laugh at that joke, laugh at that joke, it's fun. My girlfriend loves that joke. She laughs at it all the time. <clears throat> Some of you, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> now, if you are drinking tonight though, a little cautionary tale here. If you're on a date, uh, you're drinking, be careful, because the first thing alcohol affects is your judgment, right? We all took the DMV test at some point. First thing alcohol affects is your judgment. So let me paint a picture for you. A little fable, a little maybe it happened. It, it happened. Okay, I was gonna dress it up all nice. It totally happened. Uh, let's say you're having a fancy night out on the town with a lady friend. You're trying to have some nice, wholesome fun with each other. You know, you you go out, you get like a big plate of chicken wings together. You're like, oh, we're having some four alarm fun. Like you uh, twinkle in each other's eyes and the night's working out and it's going well, right? But then uh, you guys want to transition from something, you know, something wholesome to something a little more risque, a little more exotic, sensual, erotic, you know? And you look in each other's eyes and then you get into activity like finger banging. <laughs> and now good judgment would dictate that before you go from one activity to the next, you wash your fucking hands, you animal. Because now your lady friend sitting in the bathtub like a rape victim. Because you just set her vagina on fire. Look at the rabbits, baby. Look at the rabbits. A little pro tip for everyone on a date, or anyone in that situation, just keep a roll of paper towels uh, by the bed. You know, keep it on your nightstand. Treat your dojo a little more like a pizza hut. That way, even if your date doesn't work out, you still have paper towels on the nightstands. <laughs> My name's Kyle Barrow. Have a good night.